Hey everyone, I am here today to show you a little tractor supply haul that I got. And if I have enough time, I'm going to try to show you a little bit of a Lowe's haul that my family got for me for Mother's Day. Um, so I actually didn't know this, but Tractor Supply sells a whole lot of stuff. I originally go in there to get uh, animal food. So um, dog food is probably the cheapest I've ever seen in bulk huge 50 pound bags um, in Tractor Supply. So I love to get dog food, but today wasn't actually time for the dog food. Today, I actually am finally starting a chicken coop, so I'm doing a chick starter grower food, which is really cool. This actually, I ended up getting this because it has prebiotics and probiotics that are included for uh, their digestion. Um, it has all kinds of stuff to optimize their growth since they're still pretty little. Um, and it's in crumble form. So I know that the chickens actually really do like crumble. Um, what I like about this is it has everything in there that's already needed for them um, all the way until they lay their first eggs. So they can stay on this for a while. Um, my chickens are not this small anymore, like on the picture. Mine are in that kind of strange teenage phase where they are not completely fully grown, but they're not cute and cuddly anymore. So they're in that little teenage stage. Um, the other thing that I ended up getting for food today was um, Do More uh, Layer Crumble, which is actually pretty cool because I use that for my duck. Now, I have a Pekin duck, and she actually lays eggs, so it's okay to actually get chicken food for layers for ducks as well. Um, because they basically eat the exact same thing. There's not really a huge difference um, And also most of the duck food that I actually see in tractor supply or anywhere else is always in pellet form And for whatever reason my duck does not like to eat pellets She only will eat crumbles for whatever reason. So I got her this. This is a layer crumble And again, it is calcium fortified. It's prebiotics and probiotics. It's really good so and she actually really enjoys crumbles, literally only thing that she will eat other than mealworms. So for each of those, those actually are not too, too bad on their prices. Um, usually for like a 15 pound bag of food in Tractor Supply, it's like 20 something dollars. So you can't actually beat that, um, especially if you know how expensive um, animal foods are. So another thing I didn't even know that Tractor Supply had, I just went in there and I was checking out and I asked them, hey, do you guys even have hay? And they did. Uh, Tractor Supply seems like they've got almost everything um, known to man. They even have guns that you can buy, um, like BB guns and stuff. Um, and since my husband is prior military, uh, we actually are into stuff like that and learning about um, firearms and firearm safety. So if you like stuff like that too, then you can check out the Military Technology Updates channel and they'll have all kinds of information for you about stuff like that, about military and firearms and stuff like that too. So I was able to get a giant bale of hay. Um, now a uh, word of caution, if you're going to go to Tractor Supply and get a giant bale of hay, I suggest that you don't do what I did and just shove it right into your trunk because the only thing that's holding it together is um, these little straps. So you're definitely going to want some sort of sheet or protective cover for the trunk of your car. Um, I had the man uh, put it right into my SUV and it is a mess back there now. So I'm going to actually have to uh, sweep that out really well. So the next thing I actually got was uh, these barrel planters. Um, if you are um, into gardening or anything like that, you're going to know that barrel planters are really big right now. The only problem is barrel planters are also very, very, very expensive. So as you can see, I have this lovely barrel planter that I showed you guys last time that is growing my potatoes right now. But and this one is obviously bigger than those, but for this one barrel planter, I paid 50 something dollars for at Lowe's. So when I went into Tractor Supply, these were $14.99 each. And this is not a bad price for a little barrel planter. So what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a few of these because uh, the last time I showed you guys my garden update, um, my squash and my zucchini um, have actually come a whole lot more 
Um, a lot more have come up since then. And the only problem is with my boxes that I've got out there, I can only really have about two squash or two zucchini per row right now because it's a tinier box. So I actually have five going on in one row right now. So I'm gonna transplant three of these and then um, one of these is going to be for my lovely little strawberry plants that I got at Tractor Supply too. And then the other one is going to be for butternut squash. Even if it's just for one plant, it's totally okay. Um, I just wanted to be able to grow it without having to build a whole nother section of these because I do love these, but they are taking up a lot of room right here. Um, and, and it's very, very expensive to pay for all the soil unless you have a lot of um, logs and twigs and mulch and stuff. And even though the right, the right way that you're supposed to actually fill a garden bed is you're supposed to do wood at the bottom, like logs, um, then tree branches, like dead tree matter, stuff like that. And then you're supposed to do mulch and then, um, then you're eventually going to get to compost and then you're going to finally get to your soil, which is all well and fine because if you have all that stuff already, then that's awesome. You're only going to pay a little bit for soil. But right now, um, a few years ago, actually a huge mulch bed used to sit right here, a huge mulch pile because our tree right there and then a few of our trees right there actually had to be trimmed off of the power lines. So we asked them if we could keep the mulch. So they said, yeah, and they dumped it all right here. If I would have had all that mulch right now, then it wouldn't have been so expensive to fill all of these. But I didn't have a whole lot of sticks left from the winter, um, or else I would have had to actually start cutting them. I did not have any log material. I didn't have any mulch on hand, and I did not have any compost. So I did my best and filled the bottoms of each of these, not the pots, but the big huge beds right here. I filled the bottoms of those with as much stick and wood material as I possibly could get. And then I just went ahead and did the rest soil because I just didn't have anything else to put in at that moment. So like I said, it's very expensive to fill those. I've probably paid well over $200 worth of soil just to get those filled and they're not they're not even filled all the way to the top um, they're filled about three quarters of the way so I got five of these and then I got five potting mix bags one per I didn't think it would take more than one per so I'm gonna actually do those transplants today uh, the next thing I actually got I got two of these and I was actually really impressed when I saw them because they're called tomato towers but they were only $4.99 and I thought well this is perfect if I can stretch it out wide and be able to put one with my cucumber and one with my green bean so that they can grow up because um, cucumber and green bean can actually grow vertically there's a lot of stuff that you can actually grow vertically but right now the cucumber the green bean is what I'm most worried about because so many have come up that they're probably going to tangle each other if they don't grow vertically and since i don't have any more room to keep transplanting everything i figured i'm going to try these out and for 4.99 that's not really a bad idea um, considering what i was originally going to get was um, like a cattle fencing panel and i was going to stick that in there but those were like 30 something dollars each so this is not a bad idea so what i'm going to do is instead of using it as a cage i'm just going to open up wide and I'm gonna put it right in each of those beds. So let me go ahead and show you the little tomato plants. I mean, not the tomatoes, the strawberry plants that I've gotten. So let me bring those up to you real quick. So I just got two of these. And these are really cute. I have actually been trying to grow some strawberries um, myself from seed, but I actually didn't know that it takes a little bit to be able to grow strawberries from seed. Um, I actually had saved some of my strawberries that I had eaten and was able to get the seeds off of them, planted them in some soil and had them sprout, but they will not start producing for at least over a year. Um, and I really wanted to be able to have some strawberries um, this year and I wanted to be able to actually enjoy them. So what's cool is 
the ones that I got, they've already got some little strawberries trying on each of them. So here's here's a little strawberry right here. I mean, they are misshapen, poor little things, but with enough sun and enough love, um, I think they'll do just fine. Um, honestly, they look really good. Uh, the only thing I think they needed more of was light, and they're a little dry. Uh, since they were sitting outside at Tractor Supply, um, they were in the very far back, so they weren't really getting direct sun. They were in the very far back of the shelf. So I've got these, and I'm going to combine them both into one barrel planter because strawberries are kind of neat where they can just hang over the planter. So that's what I was actually able to get at Tractor Supply. Um, so I'm going to show you really quick um, some of my little fruit trees that I've actually got too. Uh, so I'm going to show you these, because I didn't actually get to show in the garden update last time. Um, this is actually our plum tree that we just planted. So we have a total of four trees that are fruit trees in our yard. We have a plum, we have a pear, we have a nectarine, and we have an apple. So this guy, we just got him actually. And he looks like he's doing pretty good. Um, I have been using, um, I can't remember the brand of it, but I have been using fruit tree fertilizer for all of my trees. And it's basically in like a little gray powder form. And you sprinkle it around the bottom a little bit, and then you water it, and they're good for a long time. They're good for a few months. So this is our little pear tree. I mean, I'm sorry, this is our plum tree. I'm going to show you our pear tree next. Follow me, and I'll show you our pear tree. Our pear tree we've actually had since we've lived here. It's been here since when we moved in, and he has always given us heartless pears. I'm not sure if you can see, but we've already got some that are growing on here. This whole tree has already been pollinated, so we've got pears that are already about this big on our tree. Uh, as you can tell that this tree is really old. I'm not really sure how old he is, but we've lived here for nine years and we've had him and he has consistently given us pears. Um, honestly, in the first few years, I never actually used a lot of the pears, but I do plan on using them for jam or um, any kind of other stuff. So. I'm actually looking forward to making things with the pears this year. So the last two little trees that I've actually got over here. This is my apple tree. Uh, he was planted last year and he's doing amazing. I'm actually really proud of this little apple tree. Uh, we planted him in the spring of last year and uh, in the winter he lost all his leaves and we were hoping that he would make it through the first winter that he, um, so that he wouldn't die. Because we actually, in that, in that spot, we had a peach tree and then we originally had a cherry tree where that little plum tree was. And they both didn't make their first winter. But one day we came out and he was already starting to get green back on him. So he's still alive, he's still growing strong, and um, we've had him for over a year now. So he's doing really well. And then our last little tree that we've got is actually a nectarine tree. And I don't know if you can see, but I've actually already have fruit on him and I don't even know how because we just planted him this year. So I've got one, two, three, four little fruits that I can see. There might be some more hiding in here, but this is our little nectarine tree. And we, like I said, we just planted him this year. Um, all of these little fruit trees I have actually gotten at supermarkets, surprisingly. Um, sometimes in the springtime, they will actually have um, fruit trees outside sitting there for maybe like $20. And I have gotten all of mine from there and they're all doing really well. Um, I got these guys from Food City, uh, this one, and then the plum tree from Food City. And then I got the apple tree from Food Lion. Now, we live in the south, so those are the major uh, ones that we've got around here that actually sell fruit trees. But for, I mean, for 20 something dollars, and it's already a fruit tree, 
and you don't have to wait for years and years from a seed, that's awesome. So I really enjoy being able to plant things in my yard. I'm glad that you guys were able to see my tractor supply haul. I will eventually get my Lowe's haul in here. And if you guys like the firearms and stuff like that, please check out Military Tech Technology Updates channel and subscribe to them, subscribe to me, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.